We're here with Mark Sermon. Uh, Mark, tell us about what uh, excites you uh, uh, the most about the subject area you are, are chair chairing at the upcoming DML conference. So, Howard, I'm going to be chairing a, a session called, or, or a, a stream called New Collectives. And, you know, I'm excited at the broadest level about how learning is transforming on the, on the web. It's something unrecognizable, I think, from when you and I grew up. Uh, you know, when I look at my kids, they just follow the pathway they want, whether it's YouTube tutorials where they kind of learn a new piece of software or how to, how to do a game or all kinds of, you know, background history of Wikipedia. Really, they're driving their own learning in ways that surprise and delight me and are very different. Uh, and I think that changes the power dynamics in, in learning and in society in many of the ways that, that the web has changed other power dynamics in, in publishing or in technology or in many other spaces. And so what we want to do with this new collective stream is look at that connection. So how have the power dynamics changing or can they change for the better in learning? And what can we learn from other fields where the internet and open source have, have kind of made those same kind of shifts? So we start with the, the assumption that really in the last 10 years, organizations like Creative Commons or Wikipedia and Mozilla have used massive participation to shift things in ways that we probably never thought were possible. You know, shifting away the, the market from Microsoft dominance and away from the erosion of standards and back to what the web should be, or completely changing the encyclopedia industry in a, in a way that nobody would have believed possible, or making it easy and legal for millions of people to, to share stuff and express that sharing through things like Creative Commons licenses. You know, that is stuff that we can learn from in what's happening in education. And not just learn from, from inspiration, but very specifically, what are the new organizational forms that have kind of supported this? And then how do we take those new organizational forms and, and play with them uh, in, in learning. And so some of the questions we want people to ask or some of the things we'll dig into are things that range from sort of how do you use mass participation to push out the incumbents. If you think that, you know, private uh, small-scale technology and uh, education, you know, things like Cisco Academy or MCSEs are not the way that technology education should, should happen, how do we kind of push that out with new collective kind of ideas? That's something Mozilla would like to see happen. Uh, or for that matter, if you think universities aren't agile enough, uh, you know, what new kinds of techniques could you use to kind of outcompete them or help them, them shift their thinking? So we're looking at kind of that institutional forms that can do those things and how they might apply to, to education. But also, you know, I, I think those questions about how new collectives change education uh, go down to some more granular levels, and we'll also dig into that. So we're going to have a session called Credits versus Street Cred where we look at, you know, what do we learn from open source, from gaming, from other places where people build up credit or credibility with their peers and say, can some of those ideas actually replace or, or play the same function as traditional educational credits? If I go to, to apply for a job and somebody says, wow, this guy, you know, he did, he submitted some great code to this project. What does that mean compared to a certificate that I got from a computer science professor? Uh, so we'll dig into some of those more granular questions about the nuts and bolts of learning and education and how uh, new collectives uh, change those things. So, you know, those are the, that's the breadth of what we're talking about. Um, to me, the changes in, in education that are coming from the web and from these ideas around new collectives are, are as big as anything else we've seen in terms of how the web is, is changing the world. So coming both with your examples and your excitement about that as well as your skepticism and some of the, the challenges. I mean, we're not going to see universities go away. Uh, what does it mean to, to kind of have these ideas roll into uh, a 500 or 1,000 year old tradition of learning? What do we imagine the challenges and the opportunities are? So those are some things to, to bring as your questions. Um, and, and really bring your, bring your examples and your stories. That, that's really a piece of this as well. This is tremendously exciting to me, Mark. Uh, I see the, the, the problem or the challenge of new institutional arrangements, and I use institutional in the broadest sense, as being really the missing third element. We've got, what, five billion mobile phones? Yeah. Increasingly, those have internet access. Uh, many people in the world who never had access are, are going to have access. We've got, uh, thanks to Creative Commons and open educational resources movements and, and just teenagers putting things up on YouTube. Exactly. A huge amount of material Yet, when, when Bill Gates made his statement that we're going to see education be online in five years, I'm thinking, well, 
that's a self-motivated learner talking. How are all of those people going to organize themselves to learn together? Where, um, what, what's the role of the teacher, the facilitator, and where do they find them? I, I don't think th those are insoluble problems, but they're not problems like let's make cheaper cell phones that more people can afford. So uh, institutional questions are sometimes thornier than, than technical questions, and I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you're going to be, be tackling this. Good, good luck with it. Thanks very much. And I'll just say one last thing. I agree, and, and I think it's the, probably one of the funnest topics to dig into. And, uh, you know, one thing that got me turned on to these questions about digging into these hard problems, a couple of years ago, I helped with something called the Cape Town Declaration for, for Open Education. And it was a time where, really, we were all excited about the new rise of open educational materials that you mentioned. Uh, and that's been a, a tremendous boon, especially for self-learners, as you say. But the, the thing that the people who worked on that with me uh, help me learn, which I think is really at the crux of this, is if we think about the elements of, uh, of learning, you know, we need open content, we need those open resources, we need the network, but we also need a kind of different kind of pedagogy, a different kind of learning, and also, you know, different kinds of assessment and accreditation. And so, really, as we get to institutional stuff, we start to look at those questions exactly as you say, the teacher, the teaching method, the institution, the, the ways of proving you know what you know. That's exciting stuff to play with. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Howard.